Hi. Um, I am going to have a go at making a cover for my junk journal. <laughs> um, I've never made a junk journal before. Okay, so I've been making notes. I'm going to be using A5, well, A4 folded in half sheets for my signatures. So I ignore the first line. <laughs> so I've given myself about half an inch all the way around there. Um, at the top and the bottom because obviously I need to punch my holes for my um, elastics because I'm making a no sew journal given myself about half an inch at each side as well I hope this works I've never done anything like this before so fingers crossed that I'm doing this right this is going to be my cover this is going to be my spine yes it's wide I'm using a Toy Story box left over from birthday or Christmas or some such thing I've never done anything like this before, guys. So. <laughs> right. I'm going to stand up simply because it's easier for me. So we'll line that up. I've got a nice sharp knife here. Well, that worked. <laughs> Excuse me. I've got the flu or a cold or, you know, I'm, I'm dying of lurg. So, excuse me, sniffing at you. Awesome. Okay, right. <clears throat> now, this is the hard bit because I've got to try and match it up. I think I'll do it a section at a time. Now, I've got here an overlap from the box, so I'm going to have to be quite careful cutting that bit. You don't need to press hard, you just need to keep going over it several times until it all comes away. And it will, provided your knife is nice and sharp, it will eventually all just... I press hard on the ruler to just to hold it in place more than anything, but you shouldn't need to press hard with your knife, it's just a question of running it. Oops, I went a bit wonky there. I'm trying to watch it in two different places at once, that's why. Provided your knife is quite sharp, it will eventually go through. Excuse me, sniffing. Just make sure when you're cutting that you are on your mat. If you don't want to um, ruin your nice table, do you? Oh, almost there. It's the vinyl on the outside of the box that's giving me trouble. There you go. Yay, I have a cover. <laughs> so, this is the cover for my... Look, it is so chunky. I'm, I'm going to have trouble closing this. <laughs> I'm going to think I should have made the spine smaller. But, you know, it's all good fun, isn't it? So my papers will sit in there like that. My signatures, like so. I'm not going to be able to close this. It's going to be a gaper mouth thing. <laughs> but yeah, my signatures will sit roughly there. I think I'm going to have to use something like a bit of ribbon to tie it closed. Because <laughs> it's huge, it's junky. <sighs> we'll have to see. <laughs> I'm going to go and cut out the... Um, I've got some upholstery vinyl for the cover. I'm going to go cut that out to make that a good size and then we'll go. Okay, I've cut my first piece of material. I just, just remembered I haven't actually sort of <laughs> pressed record. And I'm just now smoothing my glue on because experiments taught me the glue that it has to be smoothed on or it goes lumpy underneath. So I'm using this sponge thing. This is not my spine fabric. My spine fabric is an upholstery leather. This is something else. Now you want to get right in the edges. I'm also aware of the fact that I've actually cut this ever so slightly too short. I hope this works. I hope I don't get stuck to the sheet underneath. 
Oh dear. Right, it's come through a little bit, but as it dries, it will dry clear and that should disappear. It's gone down lovely and smooth. No lumpy bumpy bits. And this is just one cover, like the front or the back, depending on, you know, doesn't matter which way around it goes, does it? So um, I'm going to leave that to dry. <coughs> just wondering if I can finagle it to do the other side, then they can dry together. And then what we would do is we will wrap it around like this. And then there's, I've got my upholstery leather which is going to come to about here and that will cover the entire spine. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully she says. Let's see if I can get the other side. Let's move that. What you need to do is use lots and lots and lots and lots of goo. This stuff is really hard to squeeze I have found. Or I'm just a wimp. You don't want to skimp on the glue because obviously you want your fabric to stick well. And I don't know how much is too much, I really don't. <sighs> Put my lid down somewhere. There it is. Use your brush or your sponge to smooth your glue. I was told if you don't like getting dirty then this kind of thing isn't for you. But it is possible to do this without ending up with sticky shit all over your hands. You just have to be careful. Again, make sure you get right into the edges. Otherwise, this shit is not going to stick very well. I don't mind getting dirty. <laughs> now, I want to put it about there. Don't worry about any... No, there's a dent. No, you can't see it because it's under the screen. Hang on. There's a dent here, don't worry about that because it's all going to get covered. I'm going to be matting this side of it as well. So I'm just going to fold that over to make it easier to pick it up. I should now have two nice flat pieces. Yep, I do. Awesome. And the reason I did it that way, putting the card on top of the material, is because my material is ever so slightly stretchy. It will stretch one way, but not the other. And I didn't want to stretch the material inadvertently while rubbing it into place. That's why I made sure my material was flat and I laid my card onto the material and then smoothed over the top of that. I am not going to be pushing on here. I'm not going to be using a bone folder or anything else. If there's lumps there, well, I'm just going to have to fucking live with it, aren't I? So, yeah. If you're like, oh, it didn't stick very well there, don't worry about it because you're going to be wrapping it and gluing it again in a bit, all right? I'm literally just going to wait for this to dry. Then we'll do some more. Okay, that's about dry. This is what's going on the spine. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick this into place. Um, I think it'll be easier if I put the glue on the fabric so that I can see what I'm doing. I've got no idea what I'm going to do about folding it over. I just need to know where the edge of that is. I don't know whether I need to put get a pin in that or something. I'm probably going to regret putting it on here. It's not smearing very well. But you know what, as long as it goes on. I might put some on the actual... No, I'm actually going to put some on there as well. Ugh. I'm going to stand up to do this again so I can see. This glue is um it's aileen's original tacky glue it's not very runny okay so i can't help but wonder if a runnier glue would have been a little bit better it does dry clear i do know that much which is you know a bit of a godsend but there we go you're probably all screaming at me going, what the fuck are you doing i don't know what the fuck i'm doing my first go doing this. 
Okay. And then... Line it up. Oh, well, I hope that dries clear. Oh, shit, folded the fabric. Make sure you do not fold the fabric when you put it on. I'm just going to keep smoothing this for now. And uh, I'll come back to you in a wee while. <laughs> I'm literally just going to keep running my hands over it. I haven't got anything too heavy that I can put on it. It's not going to stretch the fabric because the fabric, this fabric, is already set, if you like, and I'm not moving the, the, the vinyl, just smoothing it into place. I will be back when it's all dry. Wish me luck. Hi, welcome back. It is the next day. <laughs> I didn't get back to this last night. I was very tired and feeling quite crappy. So yeah, now I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to do this so that when I fold it over, like so, I obviously need it to be quite fixed so that when I come to, is it going to bend well? And I think it actually will close reasonably okay like that. I don't know, what do you think? Or should I do a little little cut just to make it maybe a little bit easier? So, let's put a little line, a little dot there. That's where my my seam is. I don't know if you guys can see that. I can so. So again, I probably want to come out to it. A under a centimetre either side of that line just to see you know just so it's got room to bend without this being in the way I think I need to do it about that <laughs> she says I have no idea what I'm doing I have no idea if I'm doing this right you know but I need I want to make sure that when I cut it I don't cut it right up to there because when you fold it over you don't want to see the cardboard on the edge here so yeah so also when I cut the corners I need to make sure that there's enough room on the corners so that you don't have a bit of wood sticking out you know so when I cut them I need to cut them with a little bit of room there um, you know a good quarter of an inch maybe so, what's that in? I don't believe it or not, I don't actually have a, a ruler with inches on it. My ruler, I love my ruler, I really do. It's the one that I use for everything else, but it doesn't actually have inches on. So I need to make sure... When I do this... Oh, this is nerve-wracking as fucking all hell this as well because it's attached at the bottom this is nerve-wracking this is this I don't want to fuck this up guys um because I'm loving this journal so far always go thinner because you can always always go fatter again later and always go shallower because you can always deepen it up later you cannot add material back on right um, yeah, so yeah, I've probably cut that too short because yeah, I need it to go up to where I drew it. Okay, so let's. <laughs> All I've done there is I've just done a little straight snip. This is, I'm literally guessing as I go here, guys. I don't have a formula for this, I don't have. I don't have a template that I'm following. I am just winging it. Okay, so that's there. It doesn't help that this is here because it's in the way. And don't worry about it looking too rough. I know I'm out of shot, sorry. Don't worry about it looking too rough because you're gonna mat the, um, the insides. 
okay so that doesn't matter if it looks rough and crap and all that and you're like oh my god all right so pull the middle bit down and then top bit down like so yeah so you've got a nice gap there and to test it literally just fold your book yeah see that looks fine to me like that I may just take a wee bit more I use my craft knife I think because my scissors are struggling with it she says not knowing where the hell she's put a craft knife <laughs> the problem I've got is it's such a small amount now make sure you have a really really sharp knife if you're going to do this because then it won't pull anything and you don't you know just make sure you don't cut yourselves because I don't want to be responsible for that okay so now I need to basically replicate that on the other other three so like I said don't worry about the fact that there's material everywhere we will sort all of that out when we come to glue it I think I might just use my knife so that is one side done I've added a little curve on top to see whether it makes life a little bit easier again don't worry about the fabric because that will all be a little bit of a pooch going on up there I think once I've stuck it down it should be okay yeah but literally keep picking it up and keep having a look and keep making sure that you can do it you know that it will close it will make a nice yeah like that it looks like crap inside but again, that's fine because we're going to cover it. You're not going to see it because it is going to be covered in... I'm going to mat the insides with paper. We could even mat them with another bit of leather if you want. We could do that, actually. That would be quite good. Yeah, I might do that. <laughs> right. I mean, I maybe even you could even take it up a little bit more so that it's in line with the edge of the thing but I'm worried then that you'll be able to see the book the the cardboard underneath so I've cut that one ever so slightly off I think it's because this is like a, a double piece excuse me excuse me I had a sneeze right so I'm gonna cut it about there I'm doing this with very little help. I'm occasionally asking some advice from a friend of mine who's really into junk journaling and I will link um, her channel. Um, she's been doing lives, she's very, very new, but she's, well, as in very, very new to YouTube, but she's very experienced in junk journals. So I've been watching her and I've occasionally sent her a message going, uh, how do I do it? <laughs> Driving her bonkers, I think. Um, but yeah, other than that, I am, um, I'm not following anything. I'm just going by what I have seen online. That's why I'm sort of like, uh, shitting myself. <laughs> That's probably the best cut yet. Look, I made that look really good. So now I'm going to have to glue it all down. Yeah, that was actually that was an awesome cut. Look how well that went. That is not going to butt at all. I might even have a little bit of trouble getting that one to poke in. Have to make that the bottom of the journal, won't we? So now I basically need to glue it all down. Oh, I need to do the corners. I need to glue it all down, um, and then it's going to have to sit and wait while I wait for my eyelets to arrive. I dug some eyelets out yesterday, and I thought, well, they're all right, but they're brass and the hitch posts i've got to do it up with there aren't brass ones there's only these darker aged bronze type ones aged brass and they don't match so then i thought well i could do silver i'm sure i have some silver ones somewhere and then at least i would have silver brad silver spider webs and silver I but i don't have any silver eyelets so i've just had to order some <laughs> to come which I'm a bit annoyed about because I'm like I wanted to use the old brassy style ones so I don't know I'm gonna see what comes in this pack because it's a mixed pack so we'll have to wait and see 
Okay, now I need to leave about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less on the inside of my fabric to cut that off. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that, I lent on my mouse and turned you all off. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we will be matting it. Okay, now I'm going to fold over my bottom bit like that and glue it down. This is where it gets hard because it's very hard to not go like that and you don't want to stretch the material. So when you smooth it, you want to smooth it so that it's not on the stretchy bit, if that makes sense, because it stretches that way, but it doesn't stretch that way. So when I do it, I'm going to have to sort of smooth it that way without smoothing it like that, <laughs> which is going to be hard. I have very little room, so sorry. Now I'm wondering how much of my desk I could possibly add into it. Um, I'll give myself a little bit more the bottom of the desk right I'm gonna go and grab my sponge and my you know my glue applicator thing and we'll get on with it okay I apologize that the sound's been a bit echoey I've just realized my mic was in the wrong place which is annoying as hell I'm gonna start with this end and then we'll go from there don't worry about you oh you might go over with the glue because it's gonna dry and then you're going to cover it up anyway, okay? So I keep saying, you will be matting. The brush might be easier, guys. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm new to this glue, okay? I'm new to all of this, so... Now, is that going to meet? Yes, that should meet. Okay, so as I said, when you fold it over, don't stretch it horizontally up and down the book use the flat of your fingers to don't worry if there's creases really it's not that big a deal you can always pick it up as long as you do it carefully all right like I said you can crease in towards the spine because that's just simply the way that I've laid the material okay so I can push it that way like so Ooh, sorry, dropping Funko pops everywhere because my it's so long so yeah you can go that way just don't go that way all right and it will dry quite quickly if it really really bugs you pick it up and stretch the creasy bit out which is what i've done because it does really really bug me because i'm like that now it's all in place so you can make sure it's down in the grooves nice and flat <coughs> now i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do here <laughs> so i'm going to do the other end because it's sort of going to have to be an all-in-one attempt I think there we go as you can see I went way beyond with the thing but that's fine now if your material isn't attached to your leather you could then go ahead and lay that down which that one isn't so use lots of glue there is no such thing as too much glue make sure you tuck in your little corner piece that's overlapping okay in fact you can put a little dollop of glue on that now this is the bit that you don't want to stretch remember so try when you do it not to stretch it I recommend going from the corner along now my corners are a little bit dogged so what I'm gonna do is grab a small pair of scissors and just if you've got flaps that you like, oh, I don't like that. Stick a little bit more glue on it, okay? Always, always put your glue on the top of it. All right, just to give it a little bit of help. Being as it's fabric, and it will seep through quite well. Okay, so that bit is in place. That looks okay. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see. I don't want it to slide down there, you know? And I don't want to put my phone on it because it's got glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal this corner. I don't 
didn't brush it. I knew there was something I hadn't done. With this gauzy type material, you want to brush it because otherwise it will dry lumpy under your fabric. Again, try not to stretch it. You probably will here simply because you're trying to get it tight. You're going to have some seepage from your um, glue coming through the material, but that's okay. If you think mm, the leather's not going to stick, then get some glue between the leather and the other fabric and then just smooth it on down. Okay, again don't worry about this little foot because you are going to be putting paper on it. But just to give you an idea of how that looks, that looks fucking awesome! <laughs> I'm really pleased how that looks actually. Okay, so now. Now that I've figured out one corner, I can I can do the other. There's a little bit where you can see the glue where it's come through a little bit, but that's fine because I'm gonna be putting a like a ruffle on that anyway. So you know, don't don't worry too much. Okay, yes, especially on the inside because you will be covering that up. Now I'm just checking my corner to see if it is gonna dog ear. And it is just ever so slightly. So I'm just trimming up and just making Mary Poppins. The one issue I have with this glue is I'm not quite strong enough to squeeze it one handed. I don't have that kind of grip in my hand. It's it's a very, very hard squeezy thing. Yeah. And that side went down a lot easier. Then the first side. <laughs> Did. Brilliant. Right. So, the best way to do it is to fold it. Right. You want it pooched in. Now, if you can live with that being in line with the end of your book, then by all means go for it. Personally, it bugs me a little bit. So what I'm going to do is get hold of it and just sharpen the angle ever so slightly. Excuse the coughing coming from the other room. My son's also got the leg. He's where I got it from. School is great, isn't it? <laughs> okay. And then with my mouse, so I don't inadvertently cut you all off again. So again, get your glue. Also, to help aiding with the squeezing, store it upside down because it obviously then you're not fighting to get it to actually work via gravity because it's already there. So a lot of squeezing of glue tends to come from the fact that the glue is down the wrong end of the fucking tube. I made a little bit of a pig's ear of that, but you know what? This is my first journal. Um, I think the odd mistake here and there, or everywhere, should be embraced. I'll figure out how to fix that in a sec. I'm thinking I might actually, I've got some of those book thingies, the corners, the metal. I might go all out and put those on. Just so it look awesome. Now, you really need to get the middle bit down as well, okay? So because it's pulling the other two, the other, yeah, there you go, it's pulling the sides. Let's stick it all down at once. And this you can pull tight. Get it into place. I'm literally going to sit here and hold this while it sets for a bit. And um, then I'll be back. Okay, where are we up to? Well, the cover is done, more or less, okay? That's what we've got so far. <laughs> I'm really pleased with it. So what did I do next? This is the bit that I did not film. I got some wallpaper. This wallpaper is absolutely brilliant and you can't, I don't know if you can see, can you see the sparkle? It 
is I love it I want to cover my whole house in this stuff it's just brilliant so what I did was I measured my book this was so hard because it turns out my book is not square because I can't draw square to save my fucking life so I drew my lovely square piece of paper and it, it didn't fit so it took me a, a good hour to get this right um Callie was doing my daughter was doing a live while I was cursing and muttering over on the other table trying to get it right but I eventually I got it down and what I've done is I've tried to bring it in about half a centimeter all the way around now you can see that you can see a bit of the book the cardboard underneath but you know what I don't care because once it's in and it's closed you're not really gonna see it now I probably should have done this in three separate sections but do you know what this is a learning curve and I don't care that it's a learning curve and I'm not quite sure what I've done with my um doohickey this doohickey <laughs> the bone folder um it is a learning curve and um I don't care because I love it okay so what you want to do is glue it down and let it dry don't muck around with it because it will like pooch here as in the the paper will lift away from the backing all right so let it dry I mean in some places it has actually like separated ever so slightly but you know what I don't care I really don't I don't mind that at all um, and then as it as it's dried you can give it a bit of encouragement to help bend I'm gonna have excess material there but again I don't care you know as you can see I've, I've actually spent a bit of time giving this a bit of bending I did glue that bit down there but it hasn't stuck so yeah what the hell so what am I gonna do now well I'm going to use this lace here, as you can see it's very, very nice. It's a double sided so it doesn't really matter which way I put it down I don't think. Um, probably looks a little bit neater this way. I'm going to use this on the cover and I'm going to put it there like so. And I'm going to do it on the other side as well. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra there to work with. The, the trouble is it automatically wants to curve like that. So it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass just to get it there. But we'll get there. What do you think? I think it's going to look lovely, but I think it's going to be difficult to do. Because, you know, I've not done this before. So fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm actually going to apply the glue onto the um, vinyl rather than onto the um, spider web just because I think it might sit a little bit better and because I actually want to cover this the edge I don't want to butt the material up to the edge I'm just really really carefully laying this down Trying not to let the lacy part make contact, which is bloody hard, I'll have you know. I'm really hoping that as that dries, you're not going to be able to see that. Because at the moment it looks really bad. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do now is find my big scissors so what I'm gonna do now is cut the end of this but I'm gonna give myself at, at least an inch because I don't want to do the whole inside and then on this side I've got enough to do this way as well so that it will cover like so but yeah it just it wants to curve as soon as you uh, as soon as you put it down. One tip I have got is store this bloody glue upside down. Once you put the lid back on, it makes life a lot easier. So now 
we're just going to wait for this all to dry and um, then I'll come back and we'll do the rest. Okay, so where are we at? It's the next morning. <laughs> I pinned both pieces of lace down on the inside. Um, I glued them and then put something heavy on them to wait. I haven't glued this side yet. I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. I don't think this is going to work because I think I've cut it too short. So I may have to, I don't know, it's seek advice, but let's have a look. So far, so good. If it comes to it, I'll put a bit of bloody duct tape or something on it. St clear sticky tape. Well, it's holding so far. It uh, got a little bit crappy because I laid it down while it was still wet, but I reckon I can just peel that off. Okay, so this is the other side. And what I was thinking of doing with this side is making a belly band out of the ribbon. So pulling it nice and tight because it's not elasticy, and then maybe putting a stitch in it or something to hold it. And then I've got a, a belly band there out of the out of the lace. So I pulled some black, very dusty <laughs> cotton out of my um, drawer last night. And I'm just going to thread up a little bit of cotton and because I can't think of any other way to attach it together because I don't think glue would hold so I literally just want to make a little knot in, in the lace to hold it together. I want it to overlap by quite a bit because I don't want to put the um, cotton bit too close to the edge you know the the connection bit rather too close to the edge if I could figure out a way to do this on a sewing machine without ruining the book underneath I would but put a little holding stitch in you know what? I think it's gonna work really well I might even just go around it like so I find I think it's much easier to actually with the cotton coming out of the top to then just loop and go underneath because it's just going to be so much easier than trying to fart around doing a stitch I don't know anything about making sewing knots and, and stuff like that so you know if you're there going oh my god woman what are you doing I don't know because I'm, I'm no good at this kind of thing and then I'm just gonna go back through the bottom to move it out of the way like so hey that worked actually quite well yeah I'm quite pleased with that I probably should have sewn it down there a little bit but do you know what I don't actually care it's not gonna be brilliant but do you know what I quite like it so yeah <clears throat> That will come off with a bit of uh, persuasion, I think. And if it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because I think this is going to end up being the back, which I didn't want to do because there's a dent there and I wanted that to be the back because um, I didn't want to see it. But I might actually put my hitching post through that bit. I was going to put two hitching posts, but now I'm thinking I'm just going to do the one. The hitching post is going to be in line with the middle of that spider web. That's handy. It's going to be just off to the side of that dent. I don't know whether to put it there or whether to bring it in and do two. Because I think this is going to end up quite chunky. And I'm going to use um, this lace to tie it closed thinking <laughs> you know what I could do if I wanted to cover that but then I'd be annoyed at the mess that I made with the book uh, that's going to have to be the back because that's come through quite messily I realise the book's going to end up looking like shit eventually but there you go so what I'm thinking is, is that I'm going to punch two holes 
and put eyelets in here and then I either run two pieces of ribbon and tie each of them individually to a separate hitching post or I put one piece of ribbon go out through a hole there and out through a hole there to the back and then bring it up go around the hitching post and tie it in a bit actually that would look really good actually I like the idea of that we're going to do it that way okay nerve racking nerve racking okay now my ruler here doesn't actually have inches on it which is a pain in the ass so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in I don't want to come in too much do I okay so I'm going to come in five centimeters and in two centimeters so five centimeters from the edge from the top and the bottom and then two centimeters from the outside edge <clears throat> which means I want to put my hole you know what I'm actually going to use a pen so that I can see it and I'm going to put my hole there this is this is nerve-wracking as fuck you know this don't you <laughs> and then I will do the same for my hitching posts I just hope that my crocodile is going to punch through all of this and that I can then actually set an eyelet in it because I'm not very experienced with a crocodile now I want the bigger one don't I because I did an experimental punch and the eyelets wouldn't go through the little hole and the new ones won't either okay so it needs to be the big one oh god this is this is terrifying this is this is yeah this is frightening okay right please work please work please work yay it fucking worked guys oh that's <sighs> i don't know why i do crafts i find it absolutely nerve-wracking it actually punches through here amazingly well this is much better than the corner chomper was i had issues with my corner chomper not chomping that's what the issue was and i threw it away and then somebody actually told me because i threw it away fucking ages ago and then i read on one of the um journal junk journal facebook pages that apparently these have a lifetime guarantee or something and i could have contacted them and Oh, do you know what? I've punched those holes and I don't know that I needed to for the hitching posts. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Yes, I did. That's all right. I thought I'd punch too big a hole then. <laughs> right. I want two hitching posts. Oh, I see. Oh, it's okay. Okay, so I could have used the smaller one by the look of things. Christ, I hope this fits through. Okay, so for hitching posts, you need to use the smaller thing on your crocodile, not the bigger one. And I really wish I'd done it before I put this paper down. Because you can see it. Which isn't a big deal, I know, but it would have just looked nicer if I'd thought to do it beforehand. But that's fine. You know what? That is absolutely fine. So screw your hitching posts on. Okay, you can see. Yeah, I would have preferred it if that had been underneath the, the mat. But I, you know, fuck it, I'm learning, and I? You can do it hand tight. They seem to go on quite nicely hand tight. Now, this one... I bought these drapers eyelets because I didn't have any silver ones and I wanted it all to match. <sighs> After all that I need tea. Now I also have um, some wash, but I've never used these. No, those are poppers, hang on. Now, I've never used it, so I'm not 100% sure which way round they go, even. 
I don't know that I'm going to use those because I might just confuse myself. <clears throat> I'll have to find a little, um, little box for my eyelets. I might separate them into... Oh gosh, these aren't very deep. I don't know that these are going to work now, looking at them. Oh, only just... So you just stick the holy bit through there and then pray. Okay, so it bent slightly the wrong way. That might be because I went wonky. No, that one did as well. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> it's in. Okay, so what I'm thinking now is, yeah, they didn't squash very cleanly. I hope they hold. This is, this is terrifying. Please don't rip, please don't rip. <laughs> this is, this is horrifying and, and very, very scary doing shit like this. You're all probably laughing at me going, oh my God, women, just get on with it. And, and I'm, I'm really trying. And then what I can do is wrap it around the hitching posts like so. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? It'll work if it was like gator mouth, but when it's not gator mouth, it's just going to slide off, I think. Oh, I don't know. Depends on how much I close it. So that works, kind of. If it doesn't, I can always take it. I'm not going to glue it, but I can always um, take it out and do individual ones. That's fine. Because, you know, that, that's absolutely fine. So now I have to do my signatures. This is the really scary part. This is an A5 book. So I need to figure out where the middle is. Well, that looks about good, doesn't it? And then I think I want two, two and a half, a uh, quarter of an inch. So what I want to do is go. See, I was told about every quarter of an inch, but you know, that's looking really, really close to each other. But then I could get an awful lot in here if I did it every quarter of an inch. I'm just thinking of these holes though, you know, because these holes are, huge okay let's let's do every half an inch i can always add more in i suppose later on i'm gonna use my tn as a guide yeah they want to be just above that really so that needs to be the like top edge of the hole where i've marked it because if i make it too low I'm going to be destroying my pages and obviously I don't want to be doing that. I realise they're probably a wee bit lower on the bottom than they are on the top, but that's that's okay. Oh, I'm being messaged now, left, right and centre. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to punch all of these holes and I'm going to set eyelets in them and then I'll be back. Okay, <laughs> all the eyelets are in it. It looks very like rocker style so <laughs> the issue i had though is i've marked the vinyl because it's so thick i've got two layers of vinyl and the card to go through that i had trouble getting the crocodile in to punch the holes in the first place bit of a bummer but you know that doesn't matter now i am gonna string this tn style which i've never done before so <laughs> I hope this works. I just made that so much harder than it should have been. Okay, right. Then I will go out there. <laughs> you, you're probably all there going, what the fuck are you doing, you stupid woman? I don't know. I've made that quite clear. I have no idea what I'm doing. Now I'm all caught around my chair, look. 
Oh my giddy aunt. That was the best I could come up with. <laughs> um, I just, I couldn't figure out how to TN string a load of hot without doing them individually. So um, I'm going to cut that like that. That will sit behind my signatures out of the way. I've still got quite a lot of elastic left, which is quite good. <laughs> and now all I need to do is add my signatures. Um, that's the back of my book there so that's what it looks like on the inside you won't see that diagonal once the um, signatures are in place okay it will all sit quite on top of it quite neatly I think once it's in but that's how it looks I, can't, I need to get the oh hang on I could zoom out couldn't I uh, do first um, There you go, that's a bit better. It's still taking up like the whole of the screen. That's it. Okay, so I've got my little hitch posts there. The ribbon goes through the back there and out the back cover. And then I'll chuck, chuck a shitload of signatures in there. And then the, the theory is anyway, that I will come around my hitch posts like so. Or I could even go straight up that might actually even be a better solution and then the hitch posts are just there as like a guideline to stop it sliding off I don't, what do you think round the top like that or or should i go that way or should i use something other than lace do you think because it's sliding off the hitch post. Would I have been better off with a thinner ribbon? Well, time will tell as I fill it up, I suppose. Yeah, because that's how it's... It might work a little bit better once I've got a load of pages in. So, I need to go out now. Because my mother is waiting for me to drive her around. I'm quite pleased with this so far. And do you know what? For a first go, I'm actually really, really pleased with this. That's what it looks like on the outside. It looks very, very biker style, doesn't it? I'm a bit gutted that the um, the crocodile wrecked the thing, but it happens, doesn't it? So there we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to fill it up with signatures tonight and give you a flip through of the whole thing in one go. See you in a bit. Welcome back. So hopefully this will be the last section because I need to use it today. It's the 1st of October and um, I plan to actually start using this today so I was having a dig about and I remembered I had one of these things this is a plate setter by Crocodile. Crop uh, we are memory keepers and um, I think it's called a plate set or something like that but you can put I'm going to get putting these on the corners it's not going to need a lot of squeezing not too bad at all actually it's rocked the material up a little bit, but it's because it's so freaking tight. So I'm going to stick these on, and then we're going to get started on signatures. They look all right, actually. I don't think they're going to come off too quickly, but I will um, squeeze them into place in a sec. I'm not squeezing very hard because I've never used these before. I should probably have stuck some glue or something on them first. Oh, it's called a, it's a Crocodile 3 Main Squeeze. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have, I'm going to have to list everything that I've flipping used down below, I think. Right. So. That is, wow, that looks really nice. I really, really like that. I'm going to have to buy more of those. 
So let's make some pages. I'm going to move this out of the way for a moment. And I think what I'm going to do is make, I've got some cards. I've got one, two, I've got six cards, 11 strings. So I will put those one per signature and scatter them throughout. But I think I'm going to make the signatures just five pages. I don't know, I'll have to see. But I've got like a variation of, um, I've got a map that I did, which I thought would be good for sticking stuff on. This was supposed to be that learning to write paper, but I lost a load of the lines when I um, tea dyed it, which was a bit of a shame. So I don't know if I'm going to use that, if I do I only use one, so I've got that one. I've got some ledger paper that I printed up and tea dyed some graph paper, some lined paper, I have some Tomway River paper here which um, I'm quite looking forward to using that as well. So Then I've got this which is stencil dyed which I'm quite pleased with. I might use one of these per cover, per signature as a cover for each signature. Yeah, why not? And then this is mostly plain paper. Oh, there's some more stenciling in here. Yeah, that's very, very faint. I was obviously trying different methods. This is junk mail that I have um, dyed envelopes and all sorts. Done some envelopes, I've done some paper bags. Right, that's junk mail down to there. That was a junk mail envelope. Right. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use the junk mail or not, so I'm going to put that to one side because I can use that for tags. Right, I've got some envelopes, which again I'm going to put aside, and I've got some bags that I've tea dyed, which I will put aside to use later. And then this is all tea dyed paper. Hang on, there's something in there. I made a snazzy envelope. Okay, so let's get on with it and um, I will be back when it's all done. I will hype up through this bit. finished and it's huge it's massive I don't know how the hell I'm gonna use this so with just the paper in without any work in it that is what it currently looks like so, <laughs> I love it it's fucking great I'm still not 100% sure on this method though of tying Think I may have to do this as a separate two separate ties because I think that's just going to annoy me it leans it doesn't stay upright but I kind of expected that Sheesh. look at it I am over it's taken me an, over an hour to fold up all of this and put it in so how did I do it right well I set up each um, signature the same basically so I'm gonna take you through it each signature consists of a pretty cover a plain tea or coffee or tea and coffee dyed paper a sheet of similarly dyed Tom Mary River paper another plain sheet Every other signature has a pretty greetings card. I picked these up in a thrift shop. I thought they were quite nice. They have been trimmed to fit because they stuck out a good, um, well, that much. And it just, they just, it was too much. So I trimmed them down. Then there is some dyed lined paper, another sheet of plain, a sheet of coloured paper. This was 
pre-coloured I bought it like this I did not dye it myself um, I printed up some graph paper and dyed the paper as well so that's in here another sheet of plain this was that um, learning to, uh, learning handwriting paper and the middle lines have almost disappeared so yeah another sheet of plain and then some ledger paper and finally a last sheet of plain and every signature is set up the same way so I've got no idea how easy this is going to be to write in it's probably going to be bloody impossible but there you go it may well be that I have to remove each signature as I work on it which is probably what's going to happen in which case I will move the signature over to my actual journal and use it like that and then move it over into here as I go and then it can swell as it as it gets filled up like that that's probably how I'm going to do it because there's just no way I can work in something this thick it's it's I mean look at it it's as long as my hand for crying out loud <laughs> but you know what I had loads of fun and I learned quite a lot making this um am I going to do it again I don't know it depends on how well I get on with using it if using it you know if I like it when it's finished then yes I'll make another one watch this space I have got to go in here because I anticipate I will still be in here at the time I have got paper for that time of the year to go in in which case I'll just remove some of the paper that's already in here I mean you may be thinking you know Sam your signatures are too bulky they may well be we'll see but I've got loads of Christmas paper here which is fantastic um i got this as well this is glossy though so um you know i'm not sure I, I won't write on this but i could maybe use it as backgrounds or you know i've got my little map bit i've got some scrap papers over there that i can make tags and stuff with and all of that lot so there you go this was a long journey this this took quite a while all in all it probably took four or five hours to make it if not a little bit more that does not include the drying times of the glue there were a couple of occasions where i left the glue to dry overnight on the vinyl or on the um the the other stuff i left this to dry overnight as well so this is this has probably taken me a good couple of weeks to actually make it but all in all it was about four or five hours so there you go if you have any questions please feel free to leave them down below i'd really appreciate a thumbs up because i worked bloody hard on this <laughs> so yeah uh dear, please give me thumbs up loves this loves this down below <laughs> thank you so so much for joining me um keep an eye out for a for a a, a follow-up video um or a flip through or something when i when i when i've done it I don't junk journal as a rule. This is all new to me. This is something I'm getting into. So we'll see. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, do, you know, comments, questions, all of that down below. Thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you click the purple book here in the corner, which is my planner down there, you will be subscribed. And if you hit the bell that then appears down below, you will be notified when I upload new content. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Have a good day. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>